What's up guys, Mason the Brock Henderson here, and this is The Walking Dead Season 8, Episode 14, Still Gotta Mean Something. <sighs> By the episode's title, I thought this would be a turning point. I thought, surely this has got to be the moment. Rick even said the, the title of the episode, Still Gotta Mean, you know, man's words, that's gotta mean something. I'm thinking, maybe this, this is gonna be the turning point, you know, maybe, I mean, Morgan, of course, is gonna do his thing, because he's still crazy but maybe this will be the turning point for Rick maybe this will be the moment and I gotta say it's making it hard to root for him I mean obviously he's reading Carl's letter finally after he massacred all those guys of course he couldn't do it beforehand because then those guys would not have survived or would have survived um, but that's kind of the problem I have you know if he had read that letter those guys probably wouldn't have died he probably wouldn't have just straight up slaughtered them when they were trying to help them you see the problem like okay i get i get the fact this world is different than ours i get the fact that they live in a different mindset than we do so they've got to make tougher decisions i totally understand that but you still got to be able to grasp onto some sort of humanity and right now rick has lost all of it you know like he had already kind of gone down that dark path we've already dealt with the storyline a little bit back in the, you know alexandria early days but now it just feels like he's going down that path again. And not, there's no redeeming qualities. It's not like something like turned him. He's just straight up losing himself. And he just feels like he's justified in everything he's doing. And I kind of hate the fact that not a lot of people are standing up to him and saying, Look, dude, things have got to change. You know, like Michonne at the beginning of this episode, she read Carl's letter and I had her in tears, and she's like, you need to read his, this letter. You need to see what he said to you. And then he doesn't, and then he goes out and massacres all the people, and then he comes back, and she's just like, oh, it's okay. You don't have to apologize for anything. Like, she treats him like there's no big deal, and I'm like, no, this should be a big deal because you're losing who you are. You're losing why you're different than Negan. And I don't, I don't like that. I don't like the fact that they're doing this with Rick because I feel like we've already done this before, and he's come back from that, and now he's gone back to it again. And it really, I mean, I want to root for them, but they're also doing things that make me not want to root for them. And it makes me think of Fear the Walking Dead, honestly. You know, the reason that I didn't really like that show, I honestly, I'm still not sure if I'm, gonna, I'm even going to return to it because it's on Hulu and I don't have Hulu. But the problem that I had with Fear the Walking Dead is that I didn't really want to root for any of the characters. You know, with Walking Dead... You wanted them to survive. You wanted to see them make it out of it because they were good people just trying to make it. And even when they had to do things, you know, when they had to kill people that weren't necessarily, it was things that weren't necessarily good, but you knew they had to to survive because the people they were up against were, were worse. You know, they were evil. It made sense in those situations. But now it's, it's turning into they're becoming just like the main bad guy of the season. You know, Negan, he's a bad dude. He's already shown he's a bad dude, but he's also shown that he's willing to work with people. You know, obviously the way he does it is very dictatorial, but it's not like he's just straight up saying, you know, all right, well, we're just going to kill you and take all your things and that's how it's going to be. No, he's trying to actually work with the people and trying to make them work for him. And while that is obviously bad, it's not necessarily the most evil thing they've gone up against. You know, ne Negan is just one of the toughest guys they've gone up against, which is why he's such a, a good villain to have. But the problem is, is that now our group is almost becoming worse than Negan. They're becoming more unlikable than Negan. And that's a problem. When your main heroes are doing things that even the main villain of the season isn't really working, or isn't really willing to do, that's a problem. And I think it's something that they've just sort of brushed off. You know, maybe, obviously Rick started reading Carl's note. Maybe this will redeem him in some way. But I've kind of gotten to the point where you've had your chances. You know, after Carl died, he tried to tell you we need to, you know, we need to change how we're doing things. He tried to come in with this mindset of, you know, let's help people. Let's try to work together because there's got to be something after, you know, all of that. Like all of that mindset is stuff he was pushing for. And Rick just completely ignored it and kept on killing people and kept saying, no, 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 that's not how we're going to do things. No, no, no. These people, they need to die. You know, I don't like that. I'm not a fan of it. I think it really weakens Rick as a character. It makes him unlikable. It doesn't make him seem like the hero. It makes him seem worse than the villain. And that's, in my opinion, that's just poor, poor writing. You know, they could have done this letter thing a few episodes ago. 
but they decided to hold off on it because they're like, oh, you know, we need to show just how dark Rick has gotten. You didn't need to show that. You already kind of did showing Rick in that one moment with Negan, you know, but I don't know. That's just my opinion. Obviously, if you don't have that opinion, that's how you feel about it. But personally, I think one of the best things about Rick in this show has been how he overcame and how he managed to rise to the occasion without necessarily fully giving in to his dark side, without fully giving in to what the world wants them all to be, which is just savages. But now this season, it feels like he's just, eh, you know what, let's just go full savage mode. Like, who cares anymore? In my opinion, that's just, it's not, it's not a likable thing to have for your protagonist. So, on top of that, there are other characters that I also am not really, uh, that I used to like that are doing stupid things. Like, you know, Daryl's still on his whole thing. Like, you know, oh, you can't trust White. He was trying to kill you. You just got lucky. Da, 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 da. I'm like, okay, dude, even Tara, who's been stupid, you know, for all of the season, even she has come around and said, no, 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 if he were trying to kill me, he could have killed me. <laughs> you know, he didn't have to wound me to get me to see that somebody was about to kill me. He clearly was trying to. Everybody else that got stabbed with a weapon or shot with a weapon, they died of this sickness. I did not. Clearly there's something else going on here, but Daryl's just so hard-headed that he's being an idiot about this. And even at the end, you know, they're talking about, oh, wait, Eugene is there. He can make bullets for them. Instead of, let's go get him, I, I, maybe that's what they plan to do, but that's not what they make it seem like. They're just like, oh, yeah, let's take out the man. I'm like, okay, so you're making it sound like now you're just going to kill Eugene because you don't want him to make bullets? That's not, I mean, Eugene, yeah, he's obviously working for them, but he's also kind of simple-minded in a social sense. Now, obviously, he's very, very intelligent, but common sense-wise, he's not very smart. So to just kill him off because in the moment, he's just doing what it takes to survive. And I, I know there was stuff with Eugene, and honestly, I don't remember it as well because it's been so long. I had to like watch a couple of my reviews just to get caught up on what was happening. Um, so may, I, I can't remember exactly what happened with him. The, there was a point where he had to make a choice and he decided to stay there, I think. Um, but personally, I just think the decision to say, oh, let's just take him out is kind of a, again, pushing them beyond the fact, the, the boundaries of, oh, Negan's group, and now you're coming here. You're going above what Negan's willing to do, and that's just not right. So, But with that being said, um, I, I definitely have issues with all that. I hope they do try to redeem some of these characters and try to fix some of these problems because they are issues. Uh, but this other stuff is actually pretty good. I'm still not a big fan of Henry, but I do like the dilemma that has put Morgan in because he keeps seeing him everywhere, and you can see it's really affecting him. Um, even to the point where, you know, Henry, who is still an idiot, but even at the end, whenever Morgan tells him that he had to kill, or he killed the man that killed his brother, even Henry's like, you know, I'm sorry. Like, it's like even Henry has kind of come to the point of realizing this isn't right. Um, and so I, I did kind of like that moment, even though it makes Morgan look more and more crazy. I think that's kind of the point, is showing, like, even Henry, who is still an idiot, he sees what the what a problem this is. And on top of that, you know, I do like Carol going out and finding him, and she is somebody who's lost somebody close to her before. And so to see her go out, even though she didn't really have any hope, and then be the one to find him and bring him back, it was kind of a touching moment, where you kind of see for her it's a relief, because last time she did this, it didn't turn out well for her, of course. So, um, a very nice moment there. And on top of that, all the stuff with uh, Negan and Jadis is really interesting. Uh, didn't really get much clarification on what Jadis was doing, and I don't know if we'll get much clarification on it this season. I feel like that might be a next season thing. But yeah, she just, a random helicopter shows up, she lights a flare and be like, hey, 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 and they just fly away. Um, so I don't know who she was trying to contact, but clearly she knew they were coming. Um, and it's a helicopter, so I'm like, is there another, like, is there, like, a group of people that have all of these resources that are living? Because it's been a long time since the apocalypse happened. <laughs> so, uh, the fact that somebody has a working helicopter tells me that there's some sort of community that is still up and kicking and doing quite well. Uh, so I'll be curious to see how Jadis knows about it, what they're, you know, how they tie into the the whole story and everything. Uh, but I did like, you know, the, the Negan and Jadis dialogue, really. It was really good. Obviously, not much dialogue from Jadis. But I like the fact that, you know, you see Negan trying to be compassionate. 
Because this is not what he wanted. He didn't want to take out the junkyard people. That was a Simon decision. So the fact that he kind of sees what happened and he's trying to reason with her. He's trying to say, look, this wasn't me. If you let me out of here, I will set this right. Because that's who he is. You know, even though he is a bad guy, he's still a reasonable bad guy. He's a guy that, in his mind, he will make this right because this isn't what he wanted. And that's why he's such a good villain. That's why, right now, it is kind of a, I kind of feel more for Negan than I do for Rick. Because Rick is doing things that I can't relate to. Whereas Negan, even though he is a horrible person, he's still doing things that I can make, it makes sense in my mind. You know, it makes sense why he's doing it. It doesn't... I'm not saying I would ever do that. Don't take it that way. But seriously, though, like if you were in Negan's shoes and this is what you had to do to survive, it makes sense that he's trying to work with people. He's trying to reason with them. He's trying to bargain. He is a bad guy, but it's not like he's just killing everybody and that's that's the end of it. Because that's, I don't know. I, I really, I like the complexity that they've done with Negan. Um... And, of course, we see he picks up somebody at the end. They're keeping a mystery. I guess I'll find out next episode. But um, I'll be curious to see how they're going to handle him returning because I'm sure he's going to deal. He, I'm, I'm almost positive he knows it was Simon because Simon's already, like, kind of shown himself to be a wild card with Negan watching. So I feel like he's going to know, oh, so in my absence, you just decided to take out the people that I wanted to control. I feel like he's going to not <laughs> be happy with it. And he's going to instantly know. Um so I'm curious to see how that's going to play out. But anyways, that's about all from this episode. Uh, I've got two more till I'm done with the, this season. So, on to the next one. See you in a sec. And now episode 15, Worth. So I was reminded of this episode, uh, why at the end of af- last episode, um, Zeta was like, you know, oh, uh, just, you know, we'll take him out. Talk about Eugene. Yeah, he's kind of a dick. <laughs> um, I think I remember him being like this, but I couldn't remember exactly if he had fully like gone over the edge into being total douchebag. But yeah, he has. Um, and it's just, I don't know. I, again, another thing that I feel like kind of weakens a character whenever he makes a bunch of mistakes. He's the one that turned their back on them, and then whenever they get pissed about it, he gets pissed at them for being pissed at him. I'm just like, like I get the fact he's not very socially inept. Or no, he is socially inept. I, Why do I forget what the word inept means right now? Anyways, he's not socially adept. There we go. So I get the fact that, yeah, maybe he doesn't really get why they're pissed. Maybe. But he is smart, right? Like, I, I don't know. It's just, it seems weird to me because there are moments when he seems to have a bit of clarity about what's going on, but then whenever they capture him and take him... He's just kind of like, you know, I'm just going to assume that, you know, the fact that you guys aren't talking to me is because of what I did. But uh, I'm, I'm also going to assume that the nostalgia is da 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 And I, I know you guys are actually just going to be fine with me. And we'll resume our conversation whenever you guys are ready. Like, he's just talking like, oh, yeah, thanks for bringing me back. And uh, all right, so just talk to me whenever you guys want to because I know, I know we're fine. I know things between us are fine. Like, we're good. Even though I help the bad guys and a lot of people died because of my help and uh, I'm the one that helped make sure people you know for the savior survived I'm the one that helped the bad guy and the enemy and b- practically betrayed you but we're, we're friends right like it just it doesn't seem quite right like I said I get the fact maybe he just can't pick up on it I just don't think it's a good choice because it makes me hate him even more so whenever he goes back at the end and he's sitting there talking to everyone, he's like, oh, we're going to put our pathetic lives to, to use or something like that. I just, I, I, I don't know if you're supposed to feel bad for him, if you're supposed to hate him, but I just hate him. I, you know, I think he's being an idiot <laughs> and uh, I can't wait to see him actually die. I honestly kind of wish that they had just put an arrow through his head. But um, aside from that, though, we do see a lot of what's going on with Negan right now after coming back and just how brilliantly he played everything. <laughs> Like he, oh my goodness! I I thought early on, cause you know they had the they had him picking up somebody's like, well you look like shit took a shit, <laughs> and, you know picking them up on the side of the road didn't show who it was. I'm just kind of like, well who could he be talking to? Um, and then throughout the episode, you know he's talking to Dwight and basically kind of almost egging him on, you know. And I love that, cause I'm sitting there thinking to myself the terminology he's using. He's talking about how like I'll put you through hell and you. You still haven't betrayed me. You still are working for me. You know what to do to keep yourself alive. It's like he's saying all this knowing 
is going to irk Dwight because Dwight is obviously working against him right now. Um, but he needs Dwight to kind of lead Simon into a trap so he can take out Simon and all of his people. So it's like he uses him to get that done and also to get this fake plan to Rick uh, that Dwight you know, showed them what the, the plan is going to be and then ultimately they're going to be trapped. So I just, I don't know, I, I like how he handled the situation. It, again, it fits Negan's character. And I like even his fight with Simon. You know, there's the one line they drop, it fits so perfectly. Because I was just talking about in the last episode how I felt like Rick has gone even above Negan. Because Negan doesn't want to just kill everyone, he actually wants to work with them. And now, of course, this episode he's talking about killing them all. Or just take the fight to them and just wipe them out one by one. And normally that wouldn't fit Negan's character, but he says to Simon at the end of the fight, you showed them a loophole, you showed them how to get out, now I have to kill every one of them, because now they're always going to be looking for a way out. And I'm just like, that's, it exactly makes sense for him. You know, it, he does try to work with people, he does try to, you know, you can work for me and then I'll protect you, but you got to give me your stuff. You know, very dictatorial, but now that Simon kind of overstepped his bounds, and he allowed hilltop to kind of see that there's always a way out he's like well now they're just always going to be looking for a way out so now i have to kill them because i've got no other choice if i don't then they're just going to keep fighting back every step of the way so i don't know it just it really really fits for him um even with the the letter being read to him at the end you could see the emotion that he's feeling like you know he wants to believe it but also he knows that he's past that point now you know everything that's happened he can't just go back to that, even though he does. I think there's a part of him that wants to. And I unfortunately have seen pictures of like the new seasons, and I do know he survives. So I don't know if how he's going to. I don't know anything about that, but I do know he's going to make it out of this. And I think he does become part of the, I guess, the team somehow. So I'll be curious to see how this all works out. Um, I'm really interested. But uh, it's, I mean, this was a really good episode for Negan and for everything going on at Sanctuary. And I'll see how Rick's mind has changed in all of this, too. You know, because he did finally read the letter from Carl. You could see the emotion it brought to him. And I think he, I, I hope his mind has changed a little bit. Um, but we'll see what happens there. Other than that, the only other thing going on is uh, we do see Aaron is out in the woods and he's being... I guess, tracked by, I think they were called Oceanside. It was the place with all the, the women. Um, just really good scenes with him. You know, I really liked just both of the scenes that he had. He only had two. Uh, honestly, I've kind of forgotten what happened to Enid. I know that they killed, like, the, the lady who was in charge of Oceanside. Um, but I kind of forgot what happened after that. But he's just kind of out there fending for himself. The scene where he takes down all the walkers, I'm just like, yes, go Aaron. Like, he's, he's become such a great character um, when at first he was just kind of a little bit of a weenie. Uh, but now he's at, like he's become a really, just a, a character that's willing to survive and a character that's willing to fight to survive. And he does talk to them and say, you know, look, you guys, you feel like you have to hide, but it's the saviors that made you feel this way. And if you don't fight, you're always going to have to hide. So I, I like the speech he gave to him, and I do feel like it's kind of, it's probably going to turn the, the tides of the the war going on um but we'll see how it all ends obviously next episode is the finale i don't know what to expect <laughs> in all honesty i don't i i assume people are gonna die because that always happens in the finale of the walking dead i just don't know who it's gonna be i know negan's gonna survive i know rick is gonna survive for now um i i have kind of heard what happens with him as well so i i don't know what's gonna happen though for this finale but I'm looking forward to it, so I'm going to go watch that and see you in a second. And finally, episode 16, the season finale of season 8, Raph. So, yeah, a lot of good, really good moments in this. I mean, the, the redemption for characters that I've been talking about, them just like, I'm struggling to like, I feel like I hate them, I'm not supposed to hate them. Yeah, they, they fixed a lot of it, and honestly, it was just like, the ending felt so perfect. And honestly... Aside from the one scene I will talk about that pissed me off, the rest of it feels like it could have ended the, the entire series. This would have been a great place to end. You know, with everybody working together. I mean, yeah, of course, there's still stuff that could come after. There's a there's a big hurt on the way. 
but they're working together, which means it feels like it should be easier to beat it. You've got Eugene making bullets, so it should be fine. You shouldn't run out of bullets anytime soon. You know, you've got Negan being a representation of the world that was and kind of showing that we can make a, a plan after all of this is said and done. You know, ending on the note that Rick is writing to Carl, which just perfectly sums up Carl's arc and makes it feel like this is wrapping up everything. But then they uh, realize, wait, there's money to be made, so let's make a season nine. And now I'm worried because let's just talk about the one thing that sets up for season nine the most that is ridiculously stupid. Maggie and Jesus are talking in the the hilltop, like, whatever it's called. And she's just like, yeah, Rick was wrong to let Negan live. And when the time is right, we'll show him. And then Daryl walks in, he's like, yeah, we will. And Jesus is even sitting there. He's normally the voice of reason, but he's even sitting there, like, smiling, like, yeah, I'm, I'm fully on board with this, guys. Yeah, let's show, let's show Rick why he's so wrong, even though he let Negan live, which is exactly what kind of is steamrolling this whole thing. I get, I get Maggie's point of view. I totally understand Maggie's point of view. And I can even understand Daryl, because Daryl, he did have a nice moment with Dwight finally at the end, where he let him go search for Sherry. But, um, yeah, Jesus, he's kind of shown to be very level-headed. He's shown that he's not full force into like, oh, we gotta kill people, we gotta... He's he's not somebody that wants to kill people. So why is Maggie telling him this? Why does he seem okay with this? You know, it doesn't make any sense. And I'm sorry, like, I get the fact that Maggie would be pissed at Rick for not killing Negan, but to say that she's gonna show Rick why he's wrong, that doesn't fit her character. What fits her character is like, when the time is right, we'll strike and we'll take Negan out for good. Like, that, that seems more in line with her character. Like, it seems like she would just try to go behind Rick's back and just kill him. So that way she gets her justification. Not, oh, we're going to show Rick why he's wrong. Like, she trusts Rick. She knows Rick. I can see her being pissed, but to turn her back on him and Daryl too? I mean, come on. It's just, it's so forced. It's forced conflict for season nine, and I absolutely despise it. <laughs> it's the only thing in this episode that I hate hated everything else was fantastic it's the walking dead that i know and love the characters were exactly what they should be doing like i said the scene with dwight and daryl perfect you know daryl he is a hothead at times he can act very irrationally because he does get so heated but now that all is said and done now that dwight has shown himself to be on their side and he ended up putting his life on the line for that and he very clearly is apologetic for what he did to Denise, and he knows that this could be, this could be it. And he's like, "I'm ready. At least I got to see Negan taken down. That's all I ever wanted." And instead of taking that moment for Daryl to be like, "Oh well, you know, you deserve this," and shooting him, he actually had a mature moment and said, "Here, take the keys. Go find her. Don't ever come back." Which I mean makes sense because he still doesn't like Dwight, but he's like, "Never come back. Don't ever come back. Go find her. Go find her and." Enjoy yourself, but don't come back here. It was a very mature moment for, for Daryl, and I love that scene. The scene where we find out Eugene betrayed them. Fantastic. You know, because it, it makes more sense for him to realize, oh shit, she hates me because of everything I've done? Well, I gotta show her why she's wrong. That makes more sense than him going, oh, they hate me. I, I gotta show them. I gotta make sure they all die. I, I need to see this happen. Like, th it's much more Eugene, because never once... I mean, he's very clearly a scaredy cat. He's very clearly somebody that you can't rely on <laughs> in, a, in a fight. You know, you know that for sure. But he's never shown himself to be traitorous. You know, even in the moments when he was helping Negan, it always felt like it was for his benefit. So to have him act the way he did in the last episode, I know it was setting up for the surprise. Like, oh, turns out he's working for them. Like, I get that's why he was acting that way last episode. It's more to fool us. But it makes sense for him. It makes sense for him to want to help his friends because they're the people that originally helped him in the first place. And the fact that now that line makes sense, let's put our youth or our pathetic lives to use, he wanted he took that in a way where it's like, I'll show her I'm not pathetic. I'm gonna help them out. I'll show her that I can do what I need to do to help them out. 
it makes so much more sense. I it was it was a great scene. Still don't like the last episode what they did and how they tried to fake us out with it, but I I loved the scene where we got to see him, you know, get revealed to be like oh I I actually sabotaged all the bullets. It was it was brilliant. Um, and then what was the other scene? Oh, the scene with uh, Aaron and I. I still don't remember the name of the group of the, the girls that were all I, I still think they were called Oceanside but I'm not entirely sure but seeing them come up at the last second and seeing Tara and the guys from Sanctuary like step up and be like yeah we're gonna help you know I, I love that scene too because it gave Tara a moment to be like you know of course at first she didn't trust him but then the guy's just like yeah you know we're gonna be here whether you give us weapons or not and like are you guys staying and when they did you could see Tara kind of realize okay yeah I mean they're putting their lives online, even if I don't give them guns, like, they wouldn't do that normally. So it gives her a chance to trust them, and then it gives Oceanside a chance to come in and sort of help them out to where they don't have to sacrifice themselves. Um, so a lot of it was kind of a deus ex machina. There were moments where it felt like everything worked out too well, but it all felt within character. Um, and I, again, the scene at the end where we see everybody coming together, it's just, it was so good. And it really felt like a good wrap-up for the series, seeing everybody work together. So that one scene just pissed me off. I was just like, there's no need to force this conflict. If you wanted to have a season nine, there's a herd out there. <laughs> you know, it's a big herd. They even talked about it, like, that's the biggest one I've seen yet. Like, that could be a great season nine start. And then, of course, I've seen some of the, the previews for, like, the Whisperers, the one that look like walkers, but they're not. I mean, that's a great premise, too. So you don't need to force this conflict of Maggie and Daryl feeling like they have to show Rick why he's wrong. You know, there's distrust within the group. You don't need to do that because it doesn't fit Maggie or Daryl. It fits that they would be pissed. It does not fit that they would decide to turn their back and I'm going to show him why he's wrong. Now, if, if it's going to be something simple where they're just like, you know, oh, we're just going to kill him and that'll show him or something along those lines. Like, I, I, if there's no sabotage involved and they're just saying it in a way that makes it sound like they're going to do something, but then they're not, then it's even stupider. But I, I just, I don't get the, I, I don't get the mindset that the writers had to be in to say, hey, I know, let's have Maggie and Daryl decide, you know what, not killing Negan is too much for me. Rick, we don't trust you anymore. We're going to work against you now. It just, it doesn't feel right. It feels completely off. For both of their characters and that's why I hated it and it kind of I, the, the problem is is that because it was so close to the end of the episode it kind of soured my mood for the episode in general because honestly like like I said everything else in the episode I really enjoyed but when you end on a note like that like that's one of your final endings I'm just kind of like I hate that and I'm ending the episode on a frustrated note and so it kind of, it sours the experience a little bit. Because you want the ending to be one of the best parts. And for the most part it was. But then they threw that little chunk in there that made me pissed off. <sighs> so yeah. Uh, overall, I mean, this season, I, I remember most of it. <laughs> it obviously has been a while since I've watched any of it. Um, but for the most part, I remember enjoying it. You know, I, I've started to have more and more problems with the show. And I think... a a lot of people tend to just hate the show now because that's the popular thing to do, just like hating Nickelback. You know, it's it's one of those things where everybody talks about The Walking Dead and anytime you bring it up, it's like, oh, it sucks now. I'm just like, I mean, not necessarily. Like, just because everybody says it does doesn't mean it does. Like, watch it for yourself. Make your own decisions. Um, but, f I mean, I just, there, I've had more problems when the season than I have had for most of the the series in general. You know, I've had more problems this season than I have had overall. So that's where I kind of feel like this season definitely took a downturn. Um, and not, not necessarily anything to do with, with Negan and his story. Honestly, I still feel like Negan was the strong point. It's just some of the characters that they decided to have, some of the decisions that they made the characters make that were against who they are as a character, I really feel like could have been avoided. I feel like it was just bad screenwriting in certain points just to force conflict, you know, or just to force tension that didn't need to be there. And The Walking Dead is not a show that needs that. It's a show that has been so masterful at building tension and making you feel like anybody could die at any point. 
and then they just feel like, you know what, we don't have enough tension, I know, let's have, uh, let's have this kid run down into a gauge that's completely unguarded, even though most of the time our characters have shown to be very intelligent in preventing situations like this, so let's have him run down and uh, let the bad guys out of the cage, and I know, let's have no guards up and about so whenever a walker ends up in the camp, it can attack every... Like, that whole episode where that happened is still something that I do vividly remember because it was such a dumb scene. And that's not a Walking Dead scene for me. And that's why I'm so frustrated. It feels more like Fear the Walking Dead, to be honest. Like, people make stupid decisions in Fear the Walking Dead and don't pay for it. Whereas in The Walking Dead, for most of the series, you make a stupid decision, you pay with your life. I mean, that's how it's been. Only occasionally does it happen where that doesn't. It, that's not how it works out. But some of the characters that stayed alive for as long as they did this season, like Henry, like Jared, um, there was one other character that I think pissed me off, but I don't remember who it was now. But just so many annoying... Oh, the, the woman who ran Oceanside. Like, I don't know, I just... I don't like what they did with some of the characters this season. And normally, it would just be kind of a hiccup in an overall good season, but because it's The Walking Dead and I hold it to a higher standard... I just feel like it didn't really live up to what I expect it to be. So those are my main complaints. So everything else really enjoyed. It still was a solid season. It just wasn't one of the better Walking Dead seasons. And of course, after this, I'm, I feel like I'm always going to look back and say, you know, you could have ended it here. You didn't have to go and do it. Kind of like how everybody says the office could have ended with Michael leaving. I agree, but I still thought they had some good moments. But I will say the underlying feeling is it should have ended with Michael leaving. So I feel like that's what it's going to feel like here. Like, they should have ended it with this season. Like, this should have been it. And even if they do have, even if next season is really good, I'm still going to feel like, eh, but it could have ended last season. It should have ended last season. So, anyways, all that being said, though, let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. What were your thoughts on this three episodes and this season in general? Let me know. We can talk about it and discuss all that good stuff. Leave a like and subscribe to Future Walking Dead, and I'll see you guys at the next season. Peace out.